Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing great. In today's video, we are gonna be going over a Series 13 tier list. We did mention in our announcement video of the Series 13 rules that we would do a tier list and here we are today. And uh, excuse the hat, I've got bad hair day. I'm about to go for a run. So this is why we're wearing the Ach Catchem hat today. Um, but yes, anyway, we got the rule set for Series 13 exciting it is going to be mythical pokemon we haven't used them before so it's very hype at the moment i'm looking forward to it and um yeah we've got all the information about the eligible pokemon that we're going to be able to use in series 13 uh, this list here is compiled by Cerebi, but we know these pokemon are obtainable in sword and shield and we've put them into a nice tier list for us to rank today so Getting on to the tier list, I haven't played very much Series 13, but this is quite a good thing. You might be thinking, oh, if you haven't played, how can you tier these Pokemon? But I have played many times with Mythical Pokemon in the past, so I am interested to see what my opinion is now, and then we'll do another tier list as Series 13 is more established, and we'll see what the comparisons are between that and see how close I was in my initial thoughts of how good these Pokemon were. So. This sets up another video as well. Obviously, right now, we don't have a confirmation from Play Pokemon about this being the VG rule set for the 2022-2023 season, um, which is expected, right? Uh, we can all hope that it is the rule set going into the new season, but as always, rules and announcements aren't the kind of things that are announced very quickly. So we'll have to wait and see on that. I would presume we'll probably stick with Series 12. But as I say, we can hope Series 13 is the rule set to carry us through until Scarlet and Violet comes out. Anyway, getting on to this mythical tier list. We've got all the mythicals that are obtainable, av available in Series 13. And where are we going to rank them? So... We're gonna start off from the top. Mew is our first one. Now, Mew is a very interesting Pokemon, something very close to my heart. Personally, I do like it as a Pokemon. It has access to every single TM in existence, has some nice options of speed control, it has recovery. You can even give it that iron defense body press combination if you want. It is a, an extremely flexible Pokemon. And for that, I think I would put it straight into tier A. This might be a big statement coming into it. Mew might not really be that impactful, but I think with how versatile it can be and the options they've got available to us and with how bulky you can actually make it, surprisingly bulky, I think it'll have a very big impact in the format once players start understanding and adapting it to their team. So A tier is where I'm gonna sit Mew for this one. Right now, anyway, we might change it as we go forward and put a few more in, but right now Mew is going into that A slot. Next up is Celebi. So Celebi, I do love Celebi. I remember when Gold Silver came out, Celebi was the legend, well, mythical for that kind of version. And uh, I do really like it, but unfortunately, I think it's a pretty bad Pokemon. Psychic and Grass typing, not the best typing at all. And it does have some nice options, but I, I, it's a bit meh. It's a, it is a bit meh, right? It is a bit meh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Celebi and all the Celebi fans out there. I'm one of them. I'm disappointed about this. I would love to be able to put it in S tier. That's the dream, right? But I think it's probably one of the worst mythical Pokemon we have access to. I can't see it having really much of an impact in the format at all. And it's probably not gonna get used very much. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I hope when we come back to do a second tier list, it moves right up into that A. Oh, I can't see it moving into S tier, but A tier is where we want it to be. But for now, it is going to drop down into the D tier, the bottom tier. I don't think it's really going to have much of an impact. Jirachi is up next. Now, Jirachi is an interesting one as well. Again, another... I love all the mythical Pokemon in general. It has been very good in the past, in past generations. When it has been used in certain formats, it has had a good role to play. It has been effective, obviously, with that Siren Grace ability as well uh, to boost the flinch chances of things like uh, Iron Head and stuff like that. It's a decent Pokemon. It's got some nice options around it as well. But because of its Steel and Psychic typing, again, a Steel type, I don't really see it having much of an impact in the, the metagame in Series 13, just because you have better steel options available. Uh, I don't wanna put it down into D tier because I feel like it is better than that, but I don't think it's really gonna do too much. So maybe a little bit better than 
than Cel is it better than Celebi though? Or is it another D tier Pokemon? Am I being a bit too harsh on this? I don't know. We'll stick it in C for the time being. We'll stick it in C for the time being. Okay, we'll come back to that. Victini up next. Now Victini, fire and psychic typing. All these psychic typings, why are mythicals always predominantly psychic type? I don't know. Early on generations anyway. Um, so Victini, very cool Pokemon. Fire and Psychic, like we've said. Uh, I think it's going to be very good in this format. Has some very nice options to take advantage of. Has that signature attack as well. Crazy attack, V-Create. The premise that it is a fire type in a format where, which is dominated by steel types, I think automatically puts it into the A tier. Whether or not it's S tier though is questionable. But I think I would definitely comfortably put it into A tier here because of how popular things like Zashian are going to be, how popular things like Magiana are going to be, how popular things like, I'm just looking, Melmetal are going to be, potentially. You know, and not to name all of the other steel types, I think fire types are very important. And the fact that it can come in on things like GMAX Charizard and take those big attacks as well, and not really suffer the residual damage that you're going to see every turn, and help set up teams with speed control, I think it has a very big part to play in Series 13. Big popular Pokemon as well. I'm kind of tempted to throw it in S tier, but I'm very hesitant on to what I'm throwing into S tier here, because it is S tier. I think we'll leave it in A tier for now. Okay, next up we got Keldeo again, one of the um, Musketeer Pokemon from Black and White. Mythical Pokemon, Water and Fighting Time, very cool typing. And um, again, I'm going to keep saying this about the majority of these Pokemon, one of my favorite mythicals. Uh, but where do we put Keldeo? I think Keldeo sits nicely in the B tier because I feel like it is one of those Pokemon. It's just a good all rounder, right? It's got some nice options available to us. It's not got a crazy deep move pool, but it's got some nice options, right? It's got Aqua Jet, it's got Close Combat, Sacred Sword. It's got other things that it can do as well, but it's predominantly just a very good all-round Pokemon got decent stats decent speed stat and it's good typing as well I feel like B is maybe it probably could sit in A it could sit in A but I'm a bit hesitant to throw it into the A tier just yet because I don't feel like it's got the potential or the ceiling like something like Mew or, or Victini have in my mind right now so yeah, Keldeo B tier, B tier for now. These can change as we go through. Deancy, um, Deancy. I'm the, one of the ones I'm gonna say isn't one of my favorite mythicals, but uh, nothing against Deancy. Uh, I don't really see it having much of an impact. Very bulky, can do a bunch of things, but I don't really see it having too much of an impact. The fact that it's it's got that that rock type in as well gives it a bit of a disadvantage against the seal types that are going to be predominant the dark types as well i haven't mentioned that are going to be predominant and really having a big impact in the format with all these new psychic types coming into the format and ghost type there talking ghost type um the steel titans are going to give it a, a hard time i'd say so i would i would almost throw dance it into c tier i'm hesitant to throw anything else into d tier right now but i don't think it's really going to do much i think it's going to sit there in the usage stats very low percentage if any at all you're going to get players using it that it's predominantly their favorite pokemon i would say or maybe testing some gimmicky strategies out with it but otherwise i don't see it really being a staple in the format Magirna, here we go this is the pokemon that we want to talk about and probably the one of the most busted mythical pokemon with that soul heart ability that it's got i think because of that ability because of its steel and fairy typing as well it makes it a very very strong contender it does need speed control support for sure uh, to to allow it to operate as well as it can but it doesn't necessarily um have to rely on it to start that snowball if you can get it in a good position and support it well enough and i think i'm talking myself out of putting it into a tier predominantly because of the way that i'm saying you have to support it it does need support it can't just come into a battle and it can't just do everything itself it needs support but i mean what pokemon in doubles when you're playing the doubles format doesn't need that support right there are a few exceptions to that rule but everything pretty much does really need a little help in hand 
So I shouldn't talk myself out of this S tier because I think I came into this tier list knowing that this is where I was going to put Magena. I was going to put it into S tier. I think that makes sense uh, for me that I would put it into S tier. And I'm going to stick by, I am going to stick by that because I think even if my mind changes in a couple of weeks time when I've played a bunch more uh, matches in Series 13, then that's fine. That's fine. But right now, with the experience that I've played with it so far, I feel like it is one of, if not the strongest mythical Pokemon we have access to. So, S tier for Magena. Genesect, up next. Cool Pokemon, Steel and Bug Typing. Uh, typing's not great. Strange for a mythical as well, but we're delving into the, the deeper generations of Pokemon where they're exploring mythical typings a little bit more, aren't they? So, Genesect, I don't know. I feel like it, it slots right in with the Jirachi and Dancy, it's got a few things that it can do, but I wouldn't have said it's going to really light the format up. I think it's pretty, it's pretty meh. It's pretty, meh. it's one of the meh Pokemon. It's not a good all rounder. It's got some big weaknesses that are going to be common in the format. Like I say, you're going to have to have some fire sort of coverage in your teams to get around the big threats of the steel types that you're going to have. So I would say, I would say mm, we'll slot you right in between your cousin Jirachi and uh, brethren Dancy. So Genesect C tier. Marshadow, really unique typing, very cool mythical. One of my favorites. There we go. And um, obviously fighting in ghosts. We haven't really got many fighting in ghosts. I think because it's got some really unique moves that it can take advantage of, like that Spectral Thief, where it can steal boosts from an opposing Pokemon and it's ghost typing as well. It's got some nice immunities. I would, I would stick it straight into A tier. I think it's that impactful. I think it's better than an all rounder like Keldeo. And I think it can do some really nice things in the in the format. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw. Uh, is it in? I don't know. These aren't ordered, right? So I would say Victini, Mew, Marshadow, right? As in ordered, okay? Yeah, we'll we'll stick. I probably put Jarachi to the end, to be honest, in that one. If we're doing it in order, anyway. So Marshadow into the A tier. That's why I feel. Volcanian next. I feel like Volcanian is an incredible Pokemon, and because of its fire typing as well, very unique typing again from a mythical Pokemon. Game Freak getting a bit more uh, adventurous in their typings with their mythical Pokemon here. Water and fire has the water absorb ability as well, so has that pretty much immunity to water typings. I think because of its fire typing, its water typing, I would slot it into tier A straight away. Just because, like I've said before, many things I can think about on a mythical level. There's going to be a lot of steel types in this format. I think the water and fire all wrapped up into one Pokemon is incredible. The way you can support it as well in game with a partner with maybe Surf or something like that to restore its health, I think is, is pretty nice. Um, and I think it's going to be a very, very good Pokemon. It's going to be interesting to see how correct I am about these, but I might be way off the mark, but I might be closer than you think as well. Next one up is Zeraora, the electric type Pokemon. Again, very high base speed. I think it offers a lot. I think it's a good all rounder. I don't think it's going to be one of those Pokemon that comes in like Regieleki that you would say, okay, this is, this is defining, metagame defining. But I think it's got enough about it to be in that league 100% with Keldeo, if not A tier. I think it's on the cusp between A and B for sure. Zeraora is very good, very fast, has a very good move pool. It's diverse enough where you can play it in a, a bunch of different ways. So I would definitely say B tier, but I would say it's creeping into that A tier. And I wouldn't be surprised if it goes up into that A tier when we come back and redo this. Next up is Melmetal. Now I think Melmetal is, I came into this, honestly, I came into this thinking probably Melmetal is gonna be an S tier Pokemon because of how I like to use it and how I've used it in the past and how strong it has been. I don't think it's an S tier Pokemon, if I'm completely honest. And I don't think it's an A tier Pokemon as well. I think it's a very good all rounder. I think it's heavy reliance on Trick Room is one of the things that I would say probably 
puts it down a peg or two in the tier listings, at least in my mind. I think it's definitely top of B. It's a bit like Zero Aura where I could see it creeping into the A tier for how impactful it could be in the format. It's very strong on a physical attacking side and defensively, which gives it a big advantage in this format in general. But it's reliance on Trick Room alone, I think knocks it down into the B tier. Just because when you look at stuff like Zashin, Zashin's gonna have a really easy time against it if an opponent's able to dictate the speed control of a game. And that Zashin's in a place where it can just hit the Melmetal for big damage. Now Melmetal can hit it for big damage in return. It's probably gonna be able to take one of its um, fighting type attacks, but it's gonna take a lot of damage in the meantime. And if you haven't got that speed control to kind of dictate the play for Melmetal in that situation, specifically talking about this one situation, then I would say you're gonna lose nine times out of 10. So for that reason, and again, this might mean that Melmetal will creep into that A tier once we have a play around with these Pokemon a bit more. I don't know. I think B tier is fair for it. Top of B tier for sure. Which brings us to our last Pokemon, Zarud, the newest mythical, dark and grass typing. Again, my instant reaction is to throw it right down here alongside Celebi, but I'm not really too sure it warrants sitting in D tier. I think we could probably look at it a bit more objectively. I think it's dark typing gives it a huge advantage over a bunch of things in this format. The only thing that I do, I don't like about Zarud is it doesn't get Sucker Punch, which I think would give it so many, it would give it a bit more viability in the format, in my opinion, because then it doesn't care about getting outsped or speed control on the opponent's end of the field. It can really threaten things like Victini, Mew, Marshadow. The list goes on. The dog typing definitely helps it and definitely doesn't help it against some threats, but that's just Pokemon in general, right? But I think the influx of Predominantly like psychic types, it definitely helps against that. It's got good base speed for sure. But I don't quite see it being a B tier Pokemon. And I would probably put it, I think a fair assumption is top of C tier. And again, I'm a little bit skeptical where or not this ends up. I could see it in B tier, but I feel like I need to be, I need some more evidence to kind of back that up at the minute. I think C tier is fair enough. It's not as bad as Celebi, and I do see it getting some play, but I don't see it getting very much play. Whereas I see B, A, and S tier getting a lot of play. And that is gonna be my, I think that, I think I am happy with how this has come out right now. My initial thoughts on series 13 tier list. This is where we're going. Magana S tier, Victini, Mew, Marshadow, Volcanion in A tier, feels good. B tier with Melmetal, Zero Aura, Keldeo. And I think that I think they could, the potentially these three could creep into A tier and some of the A tiers could creep down into B tier. I don't see any of these falling into the C tier. And then a C tier, of course, we've got Zarud, Genesec, Yance, and Jirachi. I think the wild card here, the wild cards here are Zarud and Deansi, which could move around. Other two, I think, are stuck there. And Celebi, as sad as it is for me to say, is stuck down in that D tier. Let me know what your tier rankings would be in relation to this for the Mythicals in Series 13 going into it. I would love to hear your opinions. Let me know if you think I'm wrong about any of these Pokemon or if I'm right about certain Pokemon. Let me know. I would love to hear your opinions. That's what it's all about. It is all about opinions on this channel and I would love to hear yours in regards to these Mythicals in Series 13. Nonetheless, though, it's going to be really exciting going into this new format, of course. We'll be starting some tournaments over on our Discord server as well. we got the bot back up and running for C checking as well. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we do get some events announced soon to support the Mythicals in these games. If not, like I've said, I will set something up to make sure everyone has access to Mythical Pokemon going into this new season. So no one's at a disadvantage to anyone else if Game Freak and Pokemon don't decide to do it for themselves but hope you've enjoyed today's video friends thanks for taking the time to come by as always if you have drop a like on the video it does really help share it with youtube and uh, if you're new to the channel 
I did mention in our last video, we are on the road to 30K subscribers. So if you wanna help us reach that goal, hit that subscribe button and make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss any content like this. This, <laughs> this gold mine of content that we are putting out all the time. And we are trying to be a bit more consistent, got a lot going on at the minute outside of the channel. So it's kind of stopping me from committing as much time as I would like to, but hopefully in the coming weeks, we'll be able to grind out a few more videos and uh, get on top of everything ready for series 13 starting, run up to Scarlet and Violet and all that other good stuff. So have a great rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in until the next one, friends. Bye-bye.